Hello and welcome everyone to another Iceberg Interactive Twitch stream. Today we will be continuing our game of Oriental Empires. Before we do that however I'd like to point out one thing and that on Steam right now we are hosting our publisher Weekend which has many of our games on sale including Oriental Empires so be sure to check that out. We're going to be continuing our game. I'm uh, just going to play. We're playing the Warring State scenario. We are turn 55. We're just going to continue on playing. Uh, recap a little bit first of what happened before so we get our bearings and then play on. If you guys have any questions or comments please leave them below in the chat. Um, be it about the game, about us or about the stream itself that would be much much appreciated. And of course if you have any advice gameplay wise for me or tactics you'd like to see um, tried out be sure to drop them in the chat as well. I would love to read your ideas. So there we go, let's have a look then. We are playing the Zhongshan and we have carved out for ourselves a pretty nice empire and one thing we did last week was to really start out the uh, the naval trade of things, which you can see right here is indicated by the white line. So we started building trade and that is giving us a nice little bit of income. So if we look at our income tab right over here, we can see that Trade is a nice chunk of our income now, 468 in total. We have some, some fair bit of trade expenses as well. But still, it's nice and it's going to be ever growing from here. We have a couple of budget issues. Uh, we have two cities that we need to be upgrading, especially the city of Gu. Which incidentally, if I recall correctly, is also our recruitment center. Yes, it is. So more... A bigger city there is worthwhile so we need to save up for that that costs a fair chunk of money though about 2000 so it will take some turns more importantly however we are at war and at the end of last week we just conquered the city of Wuhan over here and we were continuing on these are our former allies uh, we betrayed them when we start feeling enveloped uh, we had the entire coastline over here or at least the entire one this this little this chunk from Yi uh, to Ling Zhao and I think also Handan. And we started to capture Handan. And then our enemies, or our allies, um, our current enemies, the Dong Hao, who started to in, um, capturing cities as well. They captured the city of Zhangji over here, but also Yingyang. And so they, we felt really like enveloped. And we didn't like that. So we took the initiative, uh, we defeated their armies, and now we're taking their towns. And I think it's, we're fairly close. I think after Lin Hu, we're going to propose a peace. I don't necessarily want the town of Lin Hu. Um, but I think we can sack it and then give it back in exchange for a good peace treaty. How about that? How does that sound to you guys? Uh, so that's what we'll be focusing on. Hi, King of Manners. Good to see you here again. And of course we need to have a look at our different cities. So we got the city of Yingyang, which needs to be farming. Should always be farming. The city of Handan, which is growing rapidly. It's one of our main, not just our main trade hubs, it's one of the trade hubs. Um, or at least the export markets for trade. Which is quite interesting indeed. It's very much at the edge of our current little kingdom or empire, if you will. So here, this particular settlement, I think we're going to occupy it. Um, yeah. I like to have it. We can just hook it up to the trade hub, I think. It's not navigable river, so it's not that interesting, but it should allow for river trade. Hmm. And what else did we have? So yeah, this one's in turmoil. It's not... It's not a small city, 39. It's not huge either. And here we are going to continue farming as well. This is a nice little uh, city. Hey, Cabbage, how you doing? Over here, we, we used it a little bit as a throwaway city. Like, we had the settlers. We didn't know where to settle. And we just decided on moving here. It's, it's pretty disconnected from the rest of the empire. Uh, but it seems to be doing pretty well for itself. So that, that's going to generate us just a little bit of extra income. And we will abandon it uh, abandon it when we feel like it. Alright, so here we're going to continue pushing the war. Uh, I think. 
get rid of these pesky horse archers. Uh, they are fairly experienced, but fairly weak. So if we can, if we can zoom in on them, they're in the, they're in the forest here, are they? Yes, they are. They're going to be tough to spot. So they're a small group remaining, but they are pretty skilled, and they're even though their strength is low, their readiness is fairly high. Now, in turn, or you know, in the long run, what I want to do is expand further on the coast, also for the trade. So I want to get this entire area for myself. So that will be the next big war, probably. First, however, let's give our orders and try and solve this conflict. So we're going to move toward the enemy city, um, sending in some nice tough units. We have some elite units right here. We can have join in the fray. There we go. Do we need additional archers? We have three archers in this one. Yeah, we might actually... I should probably use some archers instead. So let's add some archers in there. And that should be it for now, I think. Let's hit the unturn button. Is there an expansion plan for the uh, other periods coming, like the Three Kingdoms? Hi, Lieutenant Chris, great to see you here. Uh, that's an excellent question. We are definitely planning on um, on expansions or DLC, but also on, f on free updates. Uh, we, we It's too early to be specific and to make promises on what that would entail. Um, there, there are a couple of ways we can go. We haven't fully decided yet at this point, but there will be more content. That's that's what I can say at this point. Hey, Memory Trees, how you doing? All right, let's cross the river into enemy territory. I don't really mind looting any farms because I, I, I want to pillage it. I don't want to keep the city. This one I'd like to keep though, just, you know, for memory's sake. And we build a silk weaver in Ling Zhao. I'd forgotten we were building that, but that's good. That should increase our income a fair bit again. So if we look at our trade income right now, we should see, there we go. That has been increased quite a bit. That is good. Hey, Maurice, how's it going? That is nice. So we have even more trade. So this this is our trade hub right here, right? Ling Zhao. We, we have pottery, we have silk. And we have some local goods and we're trading that uh, across land in some cases but also across water we got a network of these quays and they provide the opportunity to trade between them over bigger distances larger distances than would otherwise be possible so that's that's what you're seeing right here that's his trade so we are getting a fair bit of trade we're even exporting as far as the city of Gautang over here. What thought? What consider that? So that is pretty good. That's gonna really help us. And I think these guys are ready to pursue P pursue peas as as soon as we uh, as we barge in. We're gonna do a little sortie here. The city of Yi wants to upgrade as well. I I cannot do that yet. I simply don't have the funds for it, even if I wanted to. Hey, the inactive wall, how's it going? It's been a while. There we go. Now we're gonna hit the unturn button. And next turn, we're gonna lay siege to this city. Just need one more turn to prepare. There's a little bit of combat going on right here where we're doing a sortie against the enemy. Uh, they were badly bloodied and beaten down. We have some professional troops that can easily get rid of those. So the Han is proposing us to attack Divai within 7 turns. We don't want to attack anyone at this point. Yeah, everything alright, the Neck of Wall. It's good to, uh, like I said, it's good to see you again. Hope you're keeping busy. You have been spotted, be aware. Oh wow, this is unexpected guys. And might cause some problems to some of our stacks. This is a game changer. Look at that. We have a peasant revolt. Um, well, honestly, I think that means it's time for peace with the Dong Hu. Could we convince them to become our vassals? They will want a lot in return. I have some money. 
I can, I'm gonna offer them some money. So what if I would offer them 2,000? No, it doesn't move a bit. And if we, on top of that, we do a regular payment of 300. That would only move them a little, but that's like too much, too high of a price to pay. So we're not, we're not gonna do that. We're not gonna make this deal. We're gonna try for a different deal. We're gonna do a peace agreement. But I do want them to recognize me as the emperor, and I will pay them for the inconvenience of losing their empire. And even that they don't want to do, despite the fact that they're much weaker than me. So perhaps we can offer on money. Yeah, the red eyebrows do look like trouble because my army can be converted to them as well if I have enough militias. Luckily, I send a lot of professional troops there, so it's not that big a threat at the moment, but that one stack I need to get out of the way. So let's see if we can we can ask for money in return. Let's see. Do you have money? I want at least 500, otherwise it's, it's utterly useless. And this is all they can pay, 311. We're, we're not even going to, we're not going to do that. Yeah, I'm, I'm disappointed as well, Mr. Dong Hu. But I, d I don't want to fight these guys, to be honest. I don't see the point. I don't want this city to begin with. So I'm going to retreat over here. And I think I will reorganize. There's a little stack right here that could be trouble. Look at that. They're at the edge of our empire and they are stronger than us at, at this point. So I need to recruit some reinforcements. And they're in the forest, so I'm not going to recruit the, um... Well, let's recruit one group of nobles, and we will disband them quickly. No, I don't think there's... No, I don't have a lord there, so this peasant stack is running the risk of being converted or joining the rebellion, essentially, and that could cause problems for me. So, I will um, try and just leave the area without conflict this is a game changer i had not expected this and it, it kind of slows our progression what we can do however is upgrade goo so we're gonna do that finally goo is actually guys uh, is our capital but we have never considered it as such um those of you who who were watching previous streams will remember because it's locked in by two bigger cities. It's not our train hub, trade hub. It's our recruitment center though. So all of the proud soldiers come from Goo. Alright, we have some troops without orders. All right, we need you guys to attack. We have the archers here to dispose of the, of the enemy stack. We're going to send them back. And we should probably send a scout of some sort south to keep an eye on the this force over here and then handan needs to be farming obviously i'm just going to queue up a little more we don't have any unrest issues ourselves yet that might change of course so we need to be wary of that especially now that the um red eyebrow rebels the the peasant rebels have have established themselves so let's see if we can go out there without force. So far we seem to be unopposed. There is a little bit of combat over here where our spearmen are attacking their tribesmen. Uh, their tribesmen are a little bit hardier than our spearmen, but we have some nobles to back them up. I'm not sure if it will be enough though, but I think it should be. One of them is already wavering and the second one is as well. So I think this battle is is for us now. And here we are managing to evacuate the area. We have another stack of the enemy approaching us though. Um, not engaging us, but approaching us. And there appear to be just tribal spearmen. But the good news is, I think we managed to, we are, we are in the safe. So the Yue and the Zhao have declared war, that's not too much of an issue for me. Gu has been uh, upgraded, that will also allow us to build further improvements in Gu, especially the foundry, um, which is interesting. But also the stables. 
that will allow us to recruit some cavalry. I'm not too fond of cavalry in my uh, with my current game. We, I think we have more like infantry based. Also because we want to be a naval power at some point. Somehow it feels better to do that with infantry than with cavalry. Something about getting horses on ships, even though that's not necessarily a game mechanic. So we, I do want to engage these guys over here now. So I'm going to go back into the offensive. Um, and these guys, we're just going to let you evacuate a little further across the river to be safe. Another thing we need to be doing constantly is for our trade hub to actually keep upgrading this particular one to the wharf because that will further increase the trade multiplier but also the range at which we can trade. So especially once we um, expand to the very south that will be a good thing to do. <clears throat> so I'm going to evacuate these guys and after that I want to send them south again because this stack I want to use for my invasion of the Chi. So we will march to our capital. That will take many turns. But it is something we will have to do. I think I will do the same for these guys. I could disband them and recruit them again somewhere else. And I might just recruit additional ones since my economy is doing so well now. Uh, but they are fairly experienced. So I'd like to keep them for that, for that very reason. There's no more space to expand here. So we should be starting to chop wood. I should have done that sooner. So guys, what do you think? Should we quell the rebellion first? Or should we just move our army south and, and ignore the red eyebrow rebels over there? What's your opinion? Fight a couple of battles again, we should win all of them. We're not going to attack Vai, no matter what you do. Alright, so a lot of farms completed. Down with all who oppose you. Well, yes, but you mean down the map? Or just kill everybody? Let's see. Native power, or new power encountered the shoe. That's nice. I had not heard of the shoe before. Ah, they're over here. We have some scouts. You know, doing their thing right here, exploring the map. We have pretty good map awareness. You can see how established the map is and how many cities there are and all the factions intermingled. And that makes the Warring States era a very different scenario to play. You can't make peace with the rebels, so you need to take them out ASAP. That's true. I cannot make peace with them. And I do have the forces in the area to take them out. So, they recover their readiness. These guys haven't. All right, Cabbage, we're going to follow your your example. I'm not going to send you guys out, though. That would be a mistake. Uh, I do feel I need some extra. So I'm going to send you guys here, and I'm going to send the archers with you. And that should leave us strong enough to, to take him out, at least in the long run. All right, Cabbage, we're doing it your way. I'm going to continue farming. There's not a lot of uh, really good farmlands for our, uh, for our tr um, within our borders. Especially because of the mountains. We don't have really a lot of the nice little plains that you have more to the south. Here you have the plains, but they're not fertile lands for the most part. So that makes a difference. And then we do have text of the irrigated farming, so that works uh, relatively well. Actually, how are our technologies doing? We haven't had a look yet. So for our tanks, we're researching the uh, siege equipment, which comes in really handy if we advance south, where there are a lot of stone walled fortifications. We are researching um, height in bronze, which will increase the melee attack, which is also nice, but it also leads to a good number of new technologies, um, also trade related. And here we are looking into the Canon of Wisdom, which will, which will allow us a higher development rate, as well as for the Abacus, which does more or less, this, oh, it increases the value of trade by 15%, that's a good technology to have. 
that's good that we were doing that one. Alright, I think that's gonna be it. Uh, we have any idle stacks. So we have one stack over here who's just overlooking the... Uh, I think we're, we might as well hide him. Uh, there we go. And then set to sleep. Just to have a look, so I can have an earlier warning if anything, any army approaches. Here we're fighting off again the uh, the guys. That's just rather annoying, to be honest. And the guys we have here are pretty good. So they have very large shields or infantry, and they have an armor upgrade. So they're pretty tough. They're not easily downed, especially when for sieges that's good because you have to, you know, catch a lot of arrows before you can break through the walls. The shoe ones are fraternal harmony pack. I I don't mind but also i'm not gaining anything for it so i'll be like okay if you can make it worth my while no thank you no i'd personally go for three rich cities and easy water trade distance completes the segment of the LLC. exactly exactly that's what we want to do i want to see those trade lines expand also to the coast here and they have some great cities there, right? They have big cities, especially the city of Lindsay is a large city. Look at that. It will be tough to take, though. We need the siege engines, most likely. That's why we're researching them. But the first two are easier to take. Actually, the city of Jibai, if we can, we might just destroy it. But Gautang, we should be able to take. All right, more farms completed, more cities want to upgrade. So we need to start doing that. So let's upgrade the city of Yi. And upgrading a city also allows its population to, to grow further without getting, uh, you know, getting pissed uh, or annoyed. And the good thing about that is obviously more uh, people means more money from taxes but also a higher demand for trade goods so it will increase the trade value as well so it acts like a multiplier in many ways and more land of course more land and more land and more land stack without orders yes we got you guys without orders you guys without orders that's all planned and you guys are just waiting in the forest here ready to ambush somebody which probably won't happen but there you go Yes, make those trade lines go faster. And another battle here. I wish they would just, you know, stay out. I suppose I could just make peace with them. Um, I just would have preferred if we could actually get something out of it. Some money. Uh, but unfortunately, that is not to be. So we're going to put the army and the archers on skirmish mode. So they won't try and, they will try and evade direct contact. And we will attack from here. They have nine units, one of which is a tribal unit, which is pretty tough. And also considering it has one uh, experience, the other units are pretty weak. So I think we should be able to take him out. In Yi, we have the city upgrade. So the city is now a fair bit larger, covers big greater area. We can farm more land, as you can see. So all good things there. Here we can start farming. City of Gu. Uh, we can also farm a little bit further out now, which is, of course, also a good thing. And we can even expand to this particular island. Hey, Ketanak, how's it going? How are you today? Alright, so we have a unit here doing nothing. They chased off the enemy. Some nice encounters still remaining, actually. We might need to investigate them at some point. Here we should be on our guard. There's a leader coming up. Uh, we killed their leaders in the past on several occasions. And that has proven successful. But a little too successful since that probably contributed to triggering this rebellion. Here we're gonna take this unit out, perhaps they will have some help, and here we're gonna start the siege. 
So one thing that's going to happen now. First, the archers are going to try and burn down the walls with fire arrows. Uh, that will be the first thing you will see. And of course, we're going to try and engage these guys over here. Now, we should be able to rout them pretty quickly. Um, we have a stronger force in the area. But in the meanwhile, you see the archers are already engaging the towers and the walls and the gates. Now, they can repair a couple in between turns, so we need to destroy them faster than they can repair them. And that will allow us to create breaches, as you can see right now here, that will allow our troops to actually, you know, march in. And another breach here. And so the archers will move on to the next area, while the infantry are going to try and engage... The enemy in the breaches and the more breaches we can create the bigger the chances we can actually take the city but they are waiting for us right they have plenty of units so as soon as a breach is created they're gonna man it they're gonna send a group of troops over there to protect it so this can take a while and this will take a couple of turns perhaps But we are seem to be destroying quicker than they can repair. So in a couple of turns, I'm just going to speed it up here. We are doing a lot of damage now. There we go. All right. So that was the first wave of the siege. We we, we took some casualties. Uh, not going to lie there. Our stacks are not as great as they used to be. But relatively speaking, I think they took a lot more. We, um, especially the tribesmen took a beating. And look at that, there's so many breaches out there, and that's only going to expand. So if we took, uh, take a look, it was an indecisive battle. We lost 70 men, they lost 80. Uh, we have a bigger force, so we can afford to lose a few more. Here we had a crushing victory against the enemy. Um, their leader did not engage, though, so we need to still take him out. And they have more stragglers over here. So I think at this point, I'm just going to make peace with them. Uh, it's going to be, it's becoming annoying. So let's make a truce, not a peace. Um, it will last a little shorter. Hey, Dr. Beekman, glad you could join. No worries, thank you so much. Appreciate, uh, you know, that you spend here whatever, whichever time you have. No, it's not a limited attack. We're not going to attack them. And we need to save up again because also Yin Yang needs to be upgraded. We have plenty of cities to, to upgrade. But it is going fairly, fairly well. Look at this trade network, guys. Wouldn't it be great if we could make that ever so slightly more efficient? Of course, we could block some of the incoming trade. Perhaps even issuing an embargo. But we are making a fair bit of money. Things are going fairly well. Uh, I want to see a ship in this episode. Will my wish come true? I'm going to try. I think that's a fair goal, Katanak. I'm going to try. Let's start saving up for ships. It will be a little bit more earlier than, than would probably be efficient. Um, but I like the idea. And we managed to get the full surround. They surrendered, and we have the city. It took us two rounds, which is a lot better than I expected. Now, the Zhao wants us to attack Vai. We're obviously not going to do that. Um, more AI wants us to attack Vai, even our former enemies. We captured the city here. We don't really want the city. Um, we could destroy it. I prefer to sack it, I think. It will kill some of the population, but... And then offer it to somebody else. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just one for some scouting. I think that's good. Alright, so we're going to sack the settlement. We're going to destroy some of the buildings in there. The pavilion. The city is in turmoil. We got a lot of money from it. And I want to tr exchange it. So I assume that the Xiong Yu or the Dong Hu want their city back. It was Lin Hu, right? Let me 
check. Yes, Lin Hu. They don't want to become my vassal for it. They do want to recognize me as an emperor for it. Let's do that. Uh, they want some money in exchange. And they will reveal their capital location. They will recognize me as emperor. And they offer information about enemies. I'm going to do that. That is a wise decision. Thank you. I know. So, look at that. They're pretty far away. So there's no point in continuing a war with them. Uh, it does tell something about how strong they were if they extended from from over here all the way south. Actually, they still do to the city of Zhangji. Uh, so they are overextended, which is why we were able to be so relatively successful in the war. We, we charged them right at the middle of their empire. Alright, so now on to... Well, we need to be saving money now. So I'm going to disband some of my troops then. There we go. We no longer need these armies to the north. We're going to disband them. And that will save us a ton of money. We're also going to set the wood to disband these guys. And that will allow us to get, make some money for ships then. Because that's what we will be focusing on. Get a scout ship out first. While increasing our trade and our population. Stack without orders. Who's that? You guys. You're blocking some trade, that's nice. So less trade coming in. The reason why we're blocking this trade is if I don't want their trade, you know, our, our guys to buy their products, I want our guys to buy our own products. The Vi is offering a fraternal harmony pact. Yeah, I don't see us going to war with them anytime soon, and they're our neighbor, more or less, so I think that's good. We have another clearance complete at Guju, so we can continue farming there. We might need to construct a wall here at some point, though, but first let's let's focus on the, uh, on the ships. So we can build a boat yard, and that will allow us to uh, recruit river boats. Now, river boats, they cannot go into the sea because, well, they're river boats. But we, they will allow us to scout a nice bit. So let's do that. Let's build that. And we should probably also start building the copper pit at some point for some extra trade. Let's hire that E, nobody <laughs> from far north. He seems competent enough with his boats. Yes, we are competent with our boats anyway. No, I think we're doing well. I think that's all there is to do. Uh, who is doing nothing? You are. Oh, I forgot to stop the messages about you. You just have to be there. Projecting our power and scouting a little. I'm not gonna lie. More farms being completed. That's all fine and dandy. Look at that. We need to start irrigating our farms. Town of Goo needs to continue to grow. We're going to skip through the turns a little bit quicker. So we keep these outposts as like uh, buffers, I suppose. 
Uh, they will like, give us a little bit of income, not too much, but that's okay. Um... They're just there to be attacked, really. Yes, I was I was in doubt between copper and gold. Um, at this point, my income is so high, I can probably do both. First, I'm going to upgrade, though. There's a couple of things we need to be doing, indeed. To secure future income. And buy some paratroopers. If only, if only I could send some paratroopers behind enemy lines. How awesome would that be? I did it before. It never works out well. Alright, so this is not as eventful as the start of the game. She wants to offer us a Fraternal Harmony Pact. A regular payment for... They're... <sighs> they want to give us a loan, essentially. With a huge interest. What? I'm not gonna do that. I want to declare war with them at some point anyway. Copper needs a lot more infrastructure. The foundry, I think it is. And the uh, caravanseries. Yes, I don't think I, I still need the caravanseries as much though. Now I have the naval trade going on everywhere. So we have the settlement upgrade. Ah, we needed to finish the road here. I forgot that. So we upgraded this so this city can grow a lot faster again. We should probably also try and block some of the tra incoming trade here, or even embargo. I think we should just embargo Chi. Uh, eventually we'll declare war against them anyway. I hope they won't embargo us, but there you go. They are stronger than us since we just disbanded most of our armies, so let's see if they will be impressed. We're gonna declare a trade embargo. That will stop trade between us. G will send copper to Ling Zhao, as I understand. Mm. Yes, good point. Yep. That's true. That would be nice to set up. So we need to build the curves right over here. Cast us another hundred, so first we would need the copper, but that's a good point. Alright, let's... Then we ever finish the road here. I don't think we started this road, but we might as well finish it, since it's almost... Since it's mostly there already. And obviously, always be farming. Should probably queue up a little more. There we go. Town of Yin wants to upgrade now. Oh gosh, we're gonna keep upgrading this way. We're gonna wait a little bit for Yin. Ooh, what are these guys doing? The Han wants information about enemies. We're not gonna give you information about enemies, Han. And it's war. Chi has declared war on us. They knew we were getting ready, so we're gonna raise an army right now. And we can start re raising, recruiting some units, but first let's raise the army. To the south, we need four of the heavy spearmen. We're gonna 
at some archers and some nobles with an armor upgrade. And this stack will hopefully come in to on time. We can also recruit some additional units at Hangzhou, but at or at Handan. But since we already have high unrest, um, we may not. Uh, we may not be on time. Or we cannot recruit too many troops there. Right, it's a small stack, we just recruited a bigger stack, so in the grand scheme of things, we should be the stronger guys. Let's recruit our naval units, guys. We have some boats now. Look at that. Our ships. Ready with rowers, ready with archers, and with captains. So this one's for you, Katanak. And we're gonna send them out. We could actually uh, have some troops on them. But we can also use them to block this approach, the crossing. So we're gonna send them south as well to help out. That will surprise them. Right, so they're sending in reinforcements. First our nobles will engage, they're also sending in their own chariots. Um, we have our own chariots, we have some militia as well, a fair number of archers. And they are going to be harassing the enemy before our main line engages. Our chariots also use archers, so we can deal a fair bit of damage before we are forced to enter in close combat. However, I probably should have changed... Did I change my archers' orders to harass? I cannot recall fully. Anyway, let's speed up a little. There we go. We chase them off and the... There is no immediate danger anymore. And all our technology is already at the same time. Our army is suffering from sickness. It's the stack over here. That's okay. They're just scouting. Many farms completed. And we need to have a look at our technology now. Uh, so we probably need the cavalry. We can go, of course, obviously we need the boats as well. And we also need the anesthetic to heal our troops. There's a lot of things we do. We need. Um, this will take a long time. I think we should go for the boats. And here we could go for the um, legalism. Because it allows us to uh, issue the Edict of Standards, Ways and Measures. Which will increase our economy further. And we can also expand the influence of the strength of our boats. And we will increase our farm production. Now we will continue to get the Crouching Tiger. What we will also do is build some additional things over here. Uh, starting with the foundry or with the stables. Let's build the foundry. And let's also then build the uh, copper mine at G. Or the copper pit is still, it's not yet a mine. And Yin still wants to upgrade. We don't have any money left. We'll do that next turn probably or even later. That's all right. There's not too big a hurry. So yes, the archers are set to scout. So they are in a pretty good position. We have reinforcements coming up and we have our ships coming up. Now, our ships are not overly effective uh, at fighting, especially these ones. They're just river boats. But they should be nice to have uh, there nonetheless. We're not going to push up, we're just going to hold our ground. I don't want to be, uh, you know, we're the, we're the good guys here. So we're just going to shoot at them while they try and cross the river. Of course, they have some uh, uh, archers now as well on their chariots. But look at that, our boats are approaching, guys. They are approaching, they are coming. They're going hacks by hacks. So they will arrive late to the party. Uh, perhaps a little too late. 
but our archers are dealing with their chariots and one of the guys is already drowned we are also losing a fair number of troops though so I'm not sure in the long run if this is gonna be enough to hold them off and it is not it appears our troops have been chased off they're coming in and start looting now here is where the exciting stuff starts our archers from our boats are firing on the units over there and they cannot do anything in return because they don't have any ranged troops so our boats are damaging the enemy now they unfortunately they came too late to really change uh, help because now these guys have pushed way into our area and they will start looting which is of course unfortunate now the city itself is safe I don't really doubt that but it had fairly high unrest Alright, so these guys, this can take a while, so let me just speed it up, see if, when they decide to call it a day, which should hopefully be soon. There we go. And they kill, they do cross the river still though. And that means that we get two looted areas. The good news is, we have our reinforcements here. Put our archers to harass and we're gonna set our chariots to flank now these chariots have an armor upgrade over the other ones so they should even be a little bit more powerful and our spearmen are great at dealing with enemy chariots so we should be able to take them out fairly easily still it's not nice of course All right, do we need to construct more here? Uh, we could upgrade our wharf, but also we needed to queue up the Caravanserai uh, building. But we don't have... Requires a bazaar. Don't we have a bazaar here? Oh, wait, I'm in the wrong city. Sorry about that. Yeah, we need it here. Gonna add that to the queue. Actually, no, we needed it in the other building, obviously, where we were doing the bronze. I'm not sure which one would be better for for income. If we would build the carbon side here and let the copper be produced to bronze and then export it. It's an interesting one. Let's not build anything for now. We'll We'll decide on that later. Uh, I would like to continue the road network a little bit better here though, make it also go around. That should be better. And ideally the same at Handan. But I don't want to overwork the populace here. And I cannot recruit more uh, troops. So we just need to kick them out now. But we have established ourselves as a uh, sea power or river power now, at the very least. So that is certainly that should certainly count for something. All right, so we got another battle coming in. We got our ships trying to help us out. They're having some navigational issues there apparently, and here we have the battle going on. So we got their chariots charging into the remnants of our previous force. And our previous force is losing out quickly. His archer is unable to actually take on some of the chariots. Um, but our own force is coming in hot right now. With more archers, more of their own chariots with the armor upgrade. And they should be able to fare much better. And they are. They are quickly taking down the battle weary troops of the enemy. While they are continuing on to their militia units. Look at that. And that should allow us to really chase them off our land. And we have we brought a fair number of archers, so that also causes a lot of casualties amongst the enemy troops. And in some cases that's enough to rout them. Our main force has not been used at all. They are still waiting there. Our heavy spearmen. So just with our how would you say skirmisher force we were able to um get this done all 
All right, so Shu wants a fraternal harmony pact. Let's agree to that this time since we are at war already. Just be friends with everybody else for now. We're not gonna attack anyone, Jeng. Oh, we have an offer here for the fraternal harmony pact. Yes, that's okay. So we're gonna continue to chase these guys out. Our chariot is approaching. We will block the pass. Many farms completed. Uh, high income still. We should soon recruit some more troops in one turn. We got another heavy army stack going. A professional army stack, I should say. Going to continue chopping some trees. For future farming grounds. So let's see. We got our ships right here where we want them now. Uh, they might take some uh, some damage over time, uh, especially with the chariots. They have arrows, so they can actually harm the ships in time in turn. Um, there's not a lot I can do against that. We can always send in more ships. Obviously, they are nice to to help out. When could we recruit new ones again? Seem to have forgotten five turns, so that will take some time. We will need to tag up with some better ships at some point, though. Right, so our army is splitting up. We have some groups trying to engage the enemy uh, chariots. Over here, we are taking down the remnants of the enemy army, as well as over here. And we are succeeding in doing so. Alright, so this stack I'm just going to send back home. These guys I'm going to send north because they're pretty experienced and I'd like to keep them. And this stack I'm going to get ready to cross the river. Here there's still an enemy that's pretty annoying, so I'm going to recruit some guys to deal with that. Take out anyone who might consider raiding. There we go. We have the foundry completed at Goo. So that will give us um, better stuff in term as well. And we can start building the artillery camp. Morning. And I think that will almost... Let's do one more turn before we conclude for today. Uh, so they have a huge stack in their city though. So Gautang won't be as easy to take as, as I would have liked. But perhaps Jibai will be. Since it is unwalled at this point. So we are reorganizing again. Cherry is trying to cross. Um, our archers should take note once they are in range. There we go. And they're going to fire at each other until somebody uh, dies. That's pretty low intensity conflict right there. They're going to be chased off. Alright, the copper pit in Yi has also finished. So that's pretty good. We have a player eliminated. The Chin have actually died. I had no involvement in that. But that's interesting. Let's have a quick look at the statistics before we call it a day. So at the moment, victory point wise, our current enemy is really winning and by a pretty large margin. Chu is close. We are not particularly close, but then below us, there's an even wider gap. They're winning also because of cultural points. 
Um, Shu has the most cities, though. And also the most population. We have a slightly bigger population than Yi, which means that... Also, with our trade network, we should be able, in the long run, to defeat them in a war. But, of course, if it costs us too much, then we will lose our comparative advantage toward the rest. So, we still need to be very efficient in doing it. Even if we could win, potentially, a large fight. So, our military strength is now bigger. We won some battles, even though we also lost a couple. But we defeated some of their armies and we raised a larger force. And we can easily support that force. Battles fought. We, we we haven't fought that many battles. We did kill a lot of enemy civilians. Then again, so did our current enemy. All for the greater good, of course. And we, the enemy has our current enemy has lost a lot of troops already. They they are really, really fighters. Or they killed a lot of troops already, I should say. They also lost a lot, as we can see here. But they especially killed a lot. We have been somewhat less efficient. And then there is the construction development, which we are also coming in third. So we are fighting a, the start of a pretty big war here. Um, basically, the, the war of the uh, Yellow Sea, one could, one could easily say, is going to be who's going to be dominant in this area. Two of the biggest factions out there going to war so who do you think you guys will think will win um just let us know katanak i hope you enjoyed seeing the ships a little bit they haven't come into action too much but they're here just for you and we have our army ready to start our invasion next time with more reinforcements on the way it will be messy for sure cabbage I want to thank you so much for joining us. We've been playing Oriental Empire's Warring States scenario. If you guys want to see more Twitch streams, be sure to follow our channel and you will be notified whenever we go online again. I'm also going to say one more time that we are actually having our publisher weekend on Steam right now with a lot of our games on great deals, great sales, including Oriental Empire. So if you're looking for a good deal on that, be sure to head over to Steam today. Thank you so much for watching. We'll be back again next week with another stream and I hope to see you again then. Bye-bye everyone.